This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Welcome to Tuesday, the 29th of June, 2021. You're tuned into Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. As obviously you could see, I'm very excited about this morning's conversation. Let me tell you why. Because I've been waking on like a vibe like this for a minute, right? To try and have this conversation. Today I have... In studio, Mr. Renbert Mortimer, the second, Good to be back. right from last week. And I have my guest co-host, Mr. Darwin, Miguel Thompson. Good morning, everybody. And in the Zoom room, I have Mr. Fane Thompson. I would say no relation, but of course, they are brothers from a different mother. Of course, of course. Absolutely. Two Bahamian men committed to solidarity and to activism in the country. And we are closing out uh, Men's Health Month with a conversation about the status of Bahamian men against the backdrop of the upcoming independence ceremony. And so I'm excited about that. I think we're going to have a fantastic conversation. Plus, Mr. Rambert Mortimer II is the boy who created UB's Mingo. Shout out, let's go Mingo, let's go Mingo. Right, that's the mascot for the UB campus, not just the sports the team. Spirit, man. The spirit of the campus. Right, because because your your um, mingo is show up when the academics teams are out there when they debating. He showed up to graduation. He showed up on Rev TV on uh, Zednet. So it's uh, the mascot just represents the spirit. Anybody who's been to university, know that you yeah, need and, your mascot to lead the charge. And me and you need to talk because mingo is like a chichani. Mingo need to take Maybe no PC. Maybe that should be the mascot for Ryan, the chichani. I got here, they can't own, handle that. They can't own the whole Chikjani. <laughs> That's like these boys them want to own the whole switcher. Want to own? You can't own some things. You just can't yeah. own for yourself. They have to belong to everybody. And maybe that's what this boy telling me right now. Maybe he's saying, Aaron, you can't just own the Chikjani for yourself. Maybe you have to let it fly free. And let everybody in the Bahamas have a piece of it, eh? That's, that's what you're trying to tell me. That's genius because that is a part of branding. Um, it's called um, almost like a relinquishing your brand, so there's no brand confusion. From the man- from the Mingo mascot, we now have a group in school called Lady Mingos, right? Right. We also have the Mingettes, which is a dance crew. So there's alterations that's growing from one brand, which is a fallacy of a Blue Flamingo. We even have the Blue Flamingo literacy. For, for, first festival. of all, Blue Flamingos exist. Second them, of all. <laughs> But second of all, I want to see the Ming perform the Mingalinga, the new <laughs> dance coming out of CB, uh, uh, UB. I got to see it. Ah, man. But look here, but you're right, that's culture, right? Yes, ma'am. And, and say that part again, like when you relinquish it. Right? Yeah, it's, it's what's going on. Um, whenever I talk to my clients, right, in the branding world, um, Cats for Kids, um, shout outs to them. I work um, helping some, some consultancy with uh, Juana Luther, right? Whenever I'm talking to them, one thing I find is those people, no insult to anybody, don't take it as an insult, don't jump. But the people who can't draw, the people who can't imagine, the people who did not spend the time imagining are the ones who create rules on how it must work. Right. These are right. the brand standards. We can't go beyond this. You can't break this. And then when you look at more creative presentations, right, in the mastering glasses, you see the experts saying, oh, the final rule of creativity is break our rules. Exactly. Right. So like how Guardian is set up. If I was to put the 69 over the radio, somebody would be like, well, I can't read the radio. Then you see one magazine in the States do it. They're like, oh, that's genius. Yeah, oh, it's a creative exactly. Because I know that the word radio is... Right, right. So there's also the psychology of art, right? Mm-hmm. There's stuff that your mind already... I could put a photo over Time magazine, and your mind still says that's the word time. Right. Because that's brand recognition. Now, look here. This is what this conversation is about today, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to get into it. 
we are leading up to our independence celebrations. Right. We are less than two weeks away from it. And I think this is the most important independence celebration to date. More important than the first one, you know. Yeah. More important than the first one. In this moment, we don't just have an opportunity, but I think we have a duty to redefine, well, to reassess who we are, what it means to belong here, right. right? To belong to these islands, what it means to belong to these people, and to, to brand ourselves or rebrand ourselves, right? Because, mm -hmm. see, the policymakers hear these fancy words like, we need to craft a vision statement. Right? And, and we need to, to look forward into the future and see where we're going. But in more simple sort of terms, we need to brand ourselves. We need to decide who we are. What we, and we need to make sure that everybody who belong here and belong to us is a part of that movement. Right? right? So thank you, Mr. <laughs> the boy who is responsible. Good start off. Good morning coffee yeah. right there. The boy who is responsible for creating the Mingos. Look at how I have to create my own mascot now. And you know, this morning, I was thinking of a name for myself, right? But it, it was like, uh, I don't know, it was gonna be Aaron, look at that. Aaron, lights never go off green. It's gonna <laughs> be something petty. It was gonna be something petty and childish. Good morning, BPL. How are y'all this morning? If you look at the headlines in the Tribune this morning, uh, on the top fold, it says, BPL has 14 days. Company told that it must solve issues or face union wrath. Well, I want to say to the union involved, you guys are about 14 years too late with all of this outrage and demand. I can be honest with you all. You all are a little late on this. Um, yeah, maybe because of frequent power outages, you uh, incurred damage to your alarm clock and it didn't go off at the right time. But we have been waiting. We have been waiting for this move because you see, it can't all be the administration's fault. It can't all be the politician's fault. It's something going on at BPL. And here's the one thing I know, it ain't my fault. <laughs> no, it ain't our fault. Right. We're not the reason why the power can't stay on. We're not the reason why you don't know when the power is going to go off and you don't know when it's going to come back on. We, like, I am not the reason why you don't know when the power is off in my neighborhood. It's not my fault. It's not my fault that in 2021, you still have parts of your grid that are not on a monitoring system. Like I have to call you and tell you the power's off. Mm -hmm. And then I have to listen to you argue with me about how I don't know if the power in my own house is on or off or not. <laughs> the problem ain't me. Like the problem isn't me when I have to call you over and over again and beg you to come out and trim the trees. Mm -hmm. The problem isn't me when the windstorm come and blow the line down because the tree got pulled down. Or it's not me, it's you. Or when you have to beg them for about two weeks before hurricane. Yeah, two weeks is too late. So, so I'll be talking about the overall general problem of productivity. The fact that um, not only productivity, but proactiveness. And that if we put in place mechanisms, like you're saying, to read, to know what's going to happen, maybe there's an app that needs to be created, right, mm -hmm. for BPL, where you can just send alerts and free idea, right? Call me in the morning. But um, maybe uh, we need Arlington, to... you hear this, you hear this bring with all this common sense in here? No, no, it's called innovation and creation. No, 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 it's called common sense, and we can't <laughs> have none of that around here, boss. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, well, you know, in my book, I quote, and I said, right, the only common sense is nonsense. It looks like that's the thing that we gravitate to. Look at this. Let's go back to the union issue. Wherever it is in the country, and I'm proud to say it, my mother's unionist, Teresa Mortimer, right? She um, even is a part of Uni International, mm -hmm. for our first woman president, I believe. But ultimately, what I learned growing up in a union household is one thing my mother talks about every night, which is the primary problem of everything you just discussed, is personal problems. Right. The structures are there, the buildings are there, the generators are there. Mm -hmm. But the personnel, the people aren't normally happy. 
And that discomfort at work, no matter where it is, BPL or anywhere, that basic discomfort with mm -hmm. leadership, with decisions, with the fact that I have this great idea, but like I said last week, the best part of me was on the interview. On the interview, you ask me questions how I can make BPL better. Then you hire me and tell me integrate into the system right. and become like everybody else. You lost mm -hmm. the reason why I went off to school. You lost my degree. You exactly. lost my experience. I might have even worked for somebody big in the States. But all you see now is I don't care what was on your resume. I position you to work this control. Stop thinking. Okay. Do, do what I want you to do. Okay, dear gentlemen, first of all, you're making far too much sense for this first segment of the show. This first <laughs> segment. Of anyway. Mr. Mortimer, those are such awesome points. And what st stuck out for me the most was this idea of inclusion and exclusion from a system, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, you bring me to, to the system, you interview me, you tell me, look here, are you brilliant? Mm -hmm. All we of these, you. We want you. <laughs> right. Yeah. All yeah. of these ideas are great. Uh, but here's how we expect you to fit into the system, right? Like mm -hmm. all that common sense stuff, leave that on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? To fit in this That's system. That's too much work. You're working me out. I, I'm right. paying you for right. that. Right. <laughs> to fit in this system, we need you to mold yourself right. into something different, right? You're right. And it's amazing how you articulated that point as well, right? Because if we look at what you said earlier about the... Uh, the logo, if you go to the States and you see this logo, oh, this is a grand inspiration. This is something so amazing. It, it's amazing how we all feel the same mm -hmm. and nothing changes. So no matter how much you talk about it, no matter how much you speak about it, nothing changes. So I, I've been in many companies, organizations where I've spoken about the very issues the cultures and norms and and you and, know what and, i'm gonna get you in trouble because i know right. you want that job again right but me and him have a we worked together in the past right right i had the pleasure to be his manager and when that happened one thing i learned is how much obviously people saw the leadership was lacking right we had a leader who definitely made terrible decisions mm -hmm. who was not competent mm -hmm. and was treating people like trash but nobody could do nothing about it the employees couldn't do nothing the managers couldn't do nothing and i tried I actually tried. I almost got written up right. because I was like, I, I think you got confused somewhere in life, right? Because this is the time. Oh, no, I told you. I can be honest with you, though. You can never tell somebody who is the boss and carrying on like that. I think you got no, no, confused. No, no. I, like, I can speak like this. This is what God gave me. That's my story. Yeah, yeah. No, I no. was still on charge. Wait, that's I was what you, still going that's to what bail. you told them. I was still going to bail. So yeah. when she closed the door, and sorry, I said agenda, right? But when the person closed the door, they attempted to talk down to me. I guess this is how they got their minds them. Oh, yeah. um, so yeah, she yeah. belittled me, mm -hmm. talked to me like trash, like I didn't have two degrees, mm -hmm. like I was not educated. And what I said was, Mom, with all due respect, HR is in here. So how you spoke to me just now would have resulted in you being fired. But you are hiding behind this closed door. So let me tell you something. Last time I checked, I am a six foot three man standing over a less than five foot woman. Where in reality you feel talking to me like that if I was not educated did not result in you potentially losing right, your like life. If, mm -hmm. if I were, Like if I was truly over the bridge. Right, if I were the thug that you're attempting to right. portray me to, yeah. you me like this. Right. Yeah. And I told her, let so, me show you how I operate. I handsome. I will find a way to date your daughter and I will break her. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, listen all jokes audience. aside. All, all jokes aside. All listen. jokes aside. My point from that is... I thought I was the pettiest, but I have to admit this is... Look how educated I was, right? Let me find your daughter and give her a baby. I, <laughs> but, I thought I was the pettiest person on the planet this morning. I right, need you all right. to know that this level of petty requires... <laughs> but but don't miss the lesson. The lesson is this man is sitting next to me across from me, and he's not disagreeing because he knows what I'm talking about. Rewriting the rules. Literally, right. as men, we had a woman trying to beat us down, and if you didn't have integrity... You would walk out there every day and drink. Mm -hmm. And I told her, you are, you are damaging us. Mm -hmm. And you are hiding behind this job. Not much leaders out there. And I'm, I'm saying this to Real whoever talk. has it. Real not talk. much leaders have this testicular fortitude mm -hmm. to stand up for okay, what is right. I just want to say this. Dear, dear Renwood Wells, it turns out that you are not the only... It is a difficult word to pronounce, and I want to apologize to you <laughs> for relentlessly making fun of you for mispronouncing the word. From now on, I will only make fun of you. <sighs> LOI, don't need to make fun of you. You have to crazy. understand me to understand how much. Um, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You no, know, no, no, even no. sometimes saying millions of dollars, I just get confused. Like, I can't put it in word form. But let's stop being petty. Um, yeah, all yeah. things when it comes down to males, men, young men, boys in this country, 
we have challenges that we cannot even articulate. And that's why I love being mm -hmm. here on the show. Mm -hmm. We have, the, and, and I talk about that point to say, do you know how hard it is to restrain yourself, to remind a woman who thinks she's powerful how I could miss and hit you and you die and then I go to jail? But nobody's going to care for what cost that result. I can't ever say that anywhere except radio or when I'm hired on stage. Right, because like people, teaching And then people say, oh, how is he qualified? Oh, didn't right, I go to school? Right, right. Didn't I not write a book that I, I talked to young men for over 10 right, years? Because I'm about to tell the Bahamian listening audience that you are not allowed to be as petty yeah, as I've this way has suggested. I mean, first of all, you're allowed to write, but right. the whole point is let us create an environment where we do not have to right. engage exactly to pettiness, mm -hmm. to circumvent mm -hmm. systems that are not functioning and people refuse well, to fix. Let's look at the end result. I want to end with this. How does the system fix everything that Mina said inside that room? I go to HR, I tell them what she did. But she did. She comes back and she prints out my sheet. She says, he's come to work late three times, so I didn't write him up, so I was giving him mercy. But I guess I got to write him up now since he went talk to you all. So HR read it off as a miscommunication. And I was like, so let me get this straight. She talked to me how she talked to me. And all she have to do is just pull up mm -hmm. some facts about mm -hmm. me showing up to work late. Mm -hmm. And now it's a miscommunication. But write me up. Give me this form. But y'all could deal with this poor leadership. And everybody tell me, let it go. And I was like, why do we let bad leadership go? Don't we understand? And let's go back to the union issue again. The union wants to make noise like inside 2008, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Saul Kirshner didn't say we had to let people go because saying stuff at Atlantis. They can stop a company from shutting down. No. Can it? What if every, let's go futuristic, right? Let's, stand, I mean, in, let's innovate. Yeah, yeah. What if we finally change this policy and we allow BAME and stuff solar power? Do you think, <laughs> do you think we can need a BP, union? A union, not BPL if everybody has solar power. No, but we could need a different type of union. <laughs> I don't require, I still need a union of electrical workers and right. solar practitioners. Ah, I still go. need a union yeah, of yeah. some sort. But man, listen, to start the show, thank you for framing this, right? Uh, because with the conversation that I sort of invited Faye Thompson to extend, yes. it was really going to center around the uh, tragic incident that took place several weeks ago in okay. the Camp Road community right, right. and sort of the state and society's response to it, mm -hmm. right, against the backdrop of independence. And how... And to ask the question, how do young men cr construct their identities in this particular nation, given all, given all of these dynamics, right? I really appreciate, though, the example that you raised mm -hmm. for who may be right at that cusp, right, right? right, of being a part of the formal labor force, mm -hmm. being a part of the formal economy, right, and its mechanisms, and but because of dysfunctional systems, dysfunctional and sort of nasty personal and professional cultures, mm -hmm. right? And communal spaces that don't understand the dynamics that young men are dealing with and thus cannot offer them support that they need, mm -hmm. how these young men can slip, sort of slip Easy. from Fair. one space mm -hmm. to another. And, mm -hmm. and, and the psychological factors, right? In many instances, it's not the money it's the psychological factors right. that push young men and young women into these spaces that we call antisocial, mm. right? And if I could make a note, I saw a article. I think this it may be this morning in the Guardian. Uh, it's a or the Punch yesterday, and it's a great story, you know, about the police uh, community engagement and interaction, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it, it says this weird thing at the end, and it's sort of like, you know, we're doing all of this work to create, like, a safer place for the police. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was sort of like, hey, guys, I mean, I'm all for you focusing on your own self-interest, because who will if you don't? Mm -hmm. But that's not about creating safe spaces for young people, right, and, right. And, co and, and, and coincidentally, right, like as a part of that process, we make police work safer. Mm -hmm. But the initial intent, we're not focused on creating a safer environment no. for the police. 
Right. And and it's used as an excuse to militarize the police, actually. To make them, quote, unquote, safer is to put them in military gear and to put them in the, the right. roughest, toughest looking uh, attire that you can. And how does that benefit the inner city communities? Because if I see... Um, police officers walking around and, and walking around my community with these high-powered rifles. My attention isn't on, I'm safe. My attention is, why are these dudes coming through here, coming to bother me and my Grammy and my my granddaddy them? Come on, like, yeah, that, that's uncomfortable. Right, and it's, uh, and then it raises the, the question of the campaign that we're seeing in the U.S. of defund the police, right? De defund I, the police, right, yes. Hashtag defund, defund the, the police. police. We actually want that as well. And it's not just, you know, fire police officers and send them home. Right. What it is, it's a vocation of resources. Yes, yes. Right? Right. To support the people who should be doing the work mm -hmm. that we rely on the police to, to do, do, even though they're not trained to do it. Mm -hmm. So defund the police is really a campaign aimed at creating a safer space for right. the police. Creating police officers that are social services workers before they are police or, officers. Or no, no, not even, and not even that, you know. Mm -hmm. It is directing the funds to social services. services exactly. So the social workers mm -hmm. can do the work that, they, that needs to be done exactly. before a situation is created that the police are required to come to and resolve. Now I get it right. You you're talking that proactive uh, common sense <laughs> stuff again, huh? Well, look here. You know that you, you mean, Oh no, what you trying to say? You trying to say that my son disobedient in school? Mm -hmm. That the teacher shouldn't kick him out without doing him one learning, not learning the lesson for the day. Two, mm -hmm. understanding that picking up garbage is a punishment. That's mm -hmm. why we can't keep the country clean. We taught them mm -hmm. picking yeah. up garbage is a punishment. In Canada, when I litter for the first time, the police pull me over. Hey, you in Canada? That's a fine. When I didn't sort out my recycling items, yeah. that's a fine. Yeah. But we teach that if you misbehave, picking up garbage is your punishment. So when am I supposed to learn to recycle? Shout out to Cans for Kids. I'm a director. That's my job. Free uh, advertisement. <laughs> and I, but, um, I recycle in your fruit from but going one back, to another. But going back, right? Yeah. And again, anybody who doesn't know me, let me remind them. I am Renbird Mortimer, right? I was, uh, I'm arrested as the Cobus president. So when I talk about matters of young men, when I was introduced to the mm -hmm, system, mm -hmm. I was pursuing my second degree about doing my master's, and then I got put into the system, and I got, for the first time, my jail mate. Mm -hmm. I got threatened with a rusty nail, mm -hmm. and I trying to figure out, so I go into the whole system of the college, and nobody tell me this would be happening. So that's why I'm here today. Let's talk about the world people don't know when you think the police are your friend, because I was there. All right, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to do that on the other side of this break. And I know Mr. Fane Thompson is sitting in that Zoom room wondering when we're going to let him in. Mr. Thompson, I bring you here to reason with these two young men. I didn't realize Fane Thompson, my lawyer. He said on my case. But look here, look at how I, somebody going to have to recuse themselves, and it may have to be me. Listen, stay tuned to On the Clock with Aaron Green, 96.9 FM. We will be right back after this break. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor On The Clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor On The Clock of Aaron Green, where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. Hey, Jackie. Jackie's a hard worker with a steady income, but she has a personal loan and multiple credit cards to pay off. To keep her account current, Jackie opted for a loan from Fidelity Bank to consolidate her debt into one monthly payment and earn interest on a built-in savings account. Be like Jackie. Call 356-7764 to book a complimentary financial coaching session. Fidelity also offers virtual assistance. Fidelity, we're good for you. I've been representing all my life. I'm getting ready to make it count this time. Make it count this time. Since it's 
2021 for your family line. You better get ready. It's about that time. So tell mama to be ready. Tell it to the whole family. The rock the top for two. The count depends on you. So tell to the go tell the law. Lock it down on your calendar. Since it's 2021, this one's for everyone. Crystal Cruises is setting sail for the Bahamas once again. Crystal will follow the strictest safety protocols as guests travel to Exuma, San Salvador, Long Island, and more. And guests safe and protect the environment, Crystal's decision to homeport in the Bahamas will boost tourism and support the local economy. Learn more at crystalcruises.com. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock with Erin Green with my guest co-host, Mr. Darwin Thompson. Good morning, morning. My guest, Mr. Renbert Mortimer and Mr. Fane Thompson. Uh, as we get into the show, my housekeeping got waylaid by these man them. And that's really how it has happened. You know, don't, don't let them tell you women lazy. The man them is distract you. So let me remind you, today's show is brought to you by the Department of Inland Revenue. And if you miss the opportunity to save on your real property tax during the first round of the Real Property Tax Forgiveness Program, it is not too late. The program has been extended until August the 31st, 2021. And you can contact RPT at bahamas.gov.bs or call 242-225-5778, toll free. This message is brought to you by the Department of Inland Revenue. I'd also like to say to the person who was calling me on the text line, you can call the show at 323-6232, 325-4316, or 325-4259. Also, the text line is 422-GR96. Oh, wow. Listen, these young men today, first of all, make me feel inspired, right? That I could become a crotchety old woman in my old age because the young men and young people we could rely on to keep keeping on and doing the work of adulting. Uh, somebody uh, shared with me the other day that they think the reason that we adults cling to these popular culture elements, like we all want to be bad guys and bad gals, right? We all want to be the hardest. We all want to be the freshest, right? It's because we are afraid of becoming adults. Mm -hmm. We are afraid of doing the hard work of adulting. And so we cling to this trifling and trite foolishness that leads to nothing. And I am inspired by these young people to, and I know that not all is not lost in this country, despite what it looks like on to a couple of these texts before we bring Mr. Thompson into the show. Great show as usual. We celebrate our 48th independence and we can't go outside after 11. So how are we independent? Nassau is not a real place. I got a different. Let me spin that for you. Here's what I'm concerned about. It's 2021. We celebrate in our 48th independence year right? Mm -hmm. But we haven't been able as a collective to create and organize a celebration that fits the COVID protocols and restrictions without the assistance or the money from government. Right. Like we haven't been able to take this one most important thing on ourselves and say that we're going to do it no matter what the government is saying, no matter how much money they're willing to give us or to spend on it, we're going to do it ourselves and make sure we include the entire country. That's what I think about when I think about things we could do as an independent nation. Another text. Good morning, Aaron. Great show as usual. Big up your guests. By the way, BPL is beta testing an app to roll out soon. Well, I am glad. I th thank you very much, that BPL, is? for giving me something positive to say about Yorka, I was going to walk all of Frank Watson Boulevard. <laughs> the sign post for Alstom, I mean Albany, I mean, where do fancy people live? <laughs> Another text. The identities of many young men are being deconstructed. There yes. is an intention. Mm -hmm. There is a purpose. 
there will be a result. I want to speak to that too. Uh, just as Ren, Renbert had mentioned, that same attitude of speaking to young men any way you feel creates exactly what that text is is talking about. Because I feel like my I'm still struggling at 26 to find my identity with my child and my wife. I'm still struggling. Why is that? Because of the, the trauma that you experience from trying to pave your own path and being blocked at the door. All oh, right. It doesn't stop, though, because I'm, I'm in a special group of, of married and divorced men, right, for my second book. But the married men in particular, some of them before they was married was innovative, right. creative, designing, doing plays. Like, these are my, my peers. And, and, like, now they married, and literally when they had a wife come and they say, well, I got to call you back, wait. Okay. Well, I know but, first of okay, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Mr. Uh, good morning, Mr. Thompson. Mm. How are you? Did you did you hear what that young man said just now? About his wife coming? You well about this space that it seems that men transition to mm -hmm. into when they get married, right? And there seems to be a a sort of shunning or a a, a fear that of their wives. Yeah, and that their wives won't think that they, these types of pursuits are important. What you think? Well, well, I mean, good morning uh, to both Darren and Boss Ren, but I know them both uh, well. So morning, I know morning. that they have shared, and if they tell you that some fellows are concerned about their wives, then I wish them well, and at some time they may need divorce for proceedings. Let me know, I can wrap <laughs> uh, I do not believe that if you respect yourself, anyone should speak to you any way that they wish. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. We are dealing with a society in which uh, black men have been, to a large extent, marginalized uh, to, to uh, advance a logic of, of uh, white supremacy, white male supremacy. It is part and parcel of the, of the notion that uh, black women have also suffered this so-called uh, oppression. Mm -hmm. The relationship, therefore, then, between black women and black men will be fraught with difficulties based upon the fact that uh, uh, post-slavery, uh, um, that relationship has had to, uh, has had to readjust itself. Uh, there's nothing new about that. Uh, added to that is the crisis of the, of, the, of, the, of the family. And when I say black, I say black because a lot of people don't understand that there are specific needs that affects the black uh, yeah. community. The black the Afro -beam, the Afro -beam versus, right. versus the euro beam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's, there's certain challenges which, which impact us, and they are different. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about the links between, between let's say, uh, our, our, our people and other people. And, that's, and that, that's, that's just simply a fact of life. Um, respect is about learning to be disrespectful. And if you see your mother, you see a woman or someone in your past disrespecting men, then as a woman and or as a young man, you will, disrespect, you will disrespect yourself or you'll disrespect others. It, it is a learned reaction. Mm -hmm. Things take place in a social context. And in that regard, uh, the relationships between women and men um, are the same. Um, I find that, that uh, even in uh, uh, relationships that I may have, I may have had, uh, there are challenges, but you, have, you, have, you, have, you, you must be aware of, your, of the social context of the, of the relationship. Uh, where it came from, and uh, where it is steeped, um, and 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 then try to re redesign that consciously redesign that relationship between men and women. Right. Absolutely. So, Fane, when these young men were talking, they were sort of talking about personal experiences and experiences that they've had or the people in their social circles have had. But I kept feeling like there were parallels to the commentary that you were making about young men in inner city communities, right? And it, it made me think, in this time of independence, as we are in this process of branding ourselves and creating the vision for the next year, have we created a brand or a vision of the Bahamas that excludes, right, young men to the point where, A, they know that they are excluded, Right, they know that they are not a part of the vision of the Bahamas. I, I honestly, I, I honestly cannot see how we can have a vision which is inclusive of all Bahamas, particularly the emerging young uh, African Bahamian male, if only because of the creation post, let's say, 1970, going into the 1980s and into the 1990s, of a culture uh, which 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 minimizes them, which 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 impoverishes too many of them, and, and which drives too many of them to to survive by any means necessary. We have lived in a culture which, for all intents and purposes, the tourist economy has done well by us, but it has now faltered. It is now faltered. And, and, and upon the backs of men who consider themselves to be the breadwinners of these families, um, life must go on. 
And if I must survive, I must survive by any means necessary. Added to that is a drug culture, a narco economy, yeah. which offers opportunity, but brings with it a culture of violence, mm -hmm. which has changed the Bahamas forevermore, especially as regards the late, late 1980s into the 1990s. And, and it continues until this very day. The Bahamas is a fishing village, but for the narco economy, but for the, for the, for the, for the negatives of the, and the culture which accompanies the narco economy, which, 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 account, which, which accompanies a, a, a Bahamas which seeks to mimic the experience of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the Americans when it comes to policing the inner communities. So, yes, the, I, I applaud young men, in particular young men like Darren, Darren Thompson. And difficult, yet they remember, but yet they soldier on to make the point that we have to find a way to redefine our relationships. We have to find a way to redefine our relationships. It cannot be skewed against the young men. And it has been skewed for too long. A classic example, and, and gentlemen, this is something that you have to take under advisement, in particular you, uh, Darren, the whole question as to, as to the role of, of, of young men post-independence. Mm -hmm. Because we see with the decision last week by the Court of Appeal, a striking statement that for too long we have marginalized men, young or old, mm -hmm. to the margins of society and mm -hmm. only when it is useful, we call them up for duty. And we call them up for duty only when um, um, a, a society constructed essentially by, by, by black men and, and a few white men, uh, uh, we only call them up to duty in certain circumstances. Thank, mm -hmm. thank God for Justice Ian Winder, because he saw some of the anomalies. He saw some of the concerns which impact men negatively. And, 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 he, and he bravely ruled in an area of law, which hopefully will begin to right the imbalance which exists in this country. Now, um, you know, black Bahamian men, Bahamian men on the whole are, are sexist to that extent. But there's a strong derision in this particular community, which, which is, which is uh, proud that men are on the basis that they're just men, and without more. And that's, that's a big problem. Well, so look here. In this winder ruling, right, in, in this space right here, here's what I, 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 I thought about when you were speaking just now. The conversation, like the public and political discourse around the constitutional provision and its interpretation and the mm -hmm. issue that, this, that the Bahamian man cannot pass on or cannot have citizenship to his child if that child is born outside of wedlock, right? Yes, yes. That conversation, has have we created an environment that has diminished or has been degrading two young men and has created a negative or, you know, an environment that does not give young men the best opportunities for healthy personal development? Quick answer is yes, and I found this, and I found this, and I'm sure Darren would have found this in his experience as a, as a practicing lawyer. You go before the magistrate's court, in particular, when it comes to questions of paternity, there, there, there is a tendency on the part of the courts to err on the side of the so-called female a parent yeah. of a child, yeah. just in terms of this re routine and daily um, um, decisions. In fact, there is a, a policy position in that the Ministry of Social Affairs that there's an issue before the courts. We err on the side of supporting the position uh, of Bahamian women. Now, let, mm -hmm. let me say this. I come from a family of a powerful Bahamian mother, and we were not for her, we would not be who I am today. However, there are certain hangovers post-independence, which clearly were designed to, 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 to cripple men, even though we don't understand it, which, 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 which means we must be this binding decision. This binding decision is brought to the fore, and, and Aaron, I have not forgotten the prejudicial position in which marriage find themselves when it comes to transposing the paternity to their children. Mm -hmm. but, but the position in which men find themselves as, real, as a result of this decision, if it is a front, will be to rebalance the scale of power in the relationship between men and women when it comes to children and paternity. Mm -hmm. And this is important. And people like Cleveland Duncan, because I know he listens to the Guardian shows every day. Yeah, man. He has been he, he, he has been he has been he's been fighting this particular issue for eons. Let me give it to Cleveland. Eons. And and no one has taken him seriously. Every mm -hmm. once in a while that they look back at him. What I say to you, or what I say, what I, what I mean is this: unless we understand that the, that the relationship, our relationship between ourselves, comes out of a slave era, a, a very violent and destructive era, you'll not be able to rebalance the imbalances which our own politicians, in our name, black politicians, sought to put in place. When I saw Loftus Roker's position, articulated by him as regards Article 14 and Article 6, I, I did hang my my head, not in shame, but in disappointment. Because he, because he has a freedom fighter who does not understand that the, that the Constitution they crafted fundamentally was interpreted in a discriminatory way. And by no means am I being disrespectful to Justice, uh, Justice Burton Hall. I'm mm -hmm. suggesting that the effect of his decision marginalized Bahamian men. I'm suggesting that the many practices which come out of social services, 
and the practices of the magistrates court in particular when it comes to paternity marginalizes Bahamian men. I'm uh, suggesting that we must find ways to reorder and rebalance the society absent, absent the colonial and slave heritage mm -hmm. which was given to us, which we have continued in our own way, shape, and form. I don't right. question Finn, the police. Finn, one second. Uh, I got a caller. Mm -hmm. Say something. No, just uh, first thing, very quickly, Finn, once again, thank you. He's my first ever yeah. lawyer. Um, second of all, echoing points of, of course, Terrence Bethel, who we talked about on yeah. the break. Um, and the final thing I want to say is when you talk about that imbalance, we ain't playing the game the same. From a girl is young, her mother or the mother in the household is saying, boy, I should do this. Watch out for this. That's how you right, do it. Right. Who telling me how to play this game, fam? And that's all well, yeah, are they supposed to be telling you? No, no. I, I have a father. I have a father. Yeah. But in right. majority, statistically, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. who is telling me the things that I should be fighting for? The exactly. difference, fam, and, and the clothes. The difference is this fight that we're having is being fighted afterward, reactively. Mm -hmm. It's happening, and men aren't going to understand what's happening with, right now, what you're talking about, until they have a child, until they go to get some medication. Well, you know this. He's, he's, he's a father. Yeah. When you go to get medication for your child, is it easy, sir? No, sir. It is hard, and he is married to that woman. Yeah. He is married to her, and he cannot get medication for his sick child. What his rights child. are we fighting for? Boy, look here. Boy, I can tell you something I learned yesterday about the man, uh, the husband and the children. The husband could come in. At one point, the husband could come in and tell you anything, and that's his, his children. He could say anything. He could, he could say, God, I ain't never had sex with her. That's my wife. That's my child. And I can do what I want with that child. This time, he don't know the child from... Anyway, this is not a battle between the sexes. This is an attempt to assess and deconstruct the systems mm -hmm. that pit us against okay, one exactly. another. Exactly. Right? As a distraction mm -hmm. from the overall game. Right. But I see we got a caller on the line. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Why so long with you on your panel? Uh, Good morning. Hey. How are you? Aaron, pretty eyes, green. Ah, boy, you will <laughs> cause these by them problems, sir. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm holy, thank God. I, I'm going to try to make this short because I know time is going. But uh, I want to speak, ask uh, Fred of, uh, a, a question or two. But first, I want to say, knowing that he mentioned Loftus Roker. Now, if he was around, if he will remember when Loftus Roker was trying to straighten the Bahamas by dealing with all the illegals that had came here, he was stopped by the former Prime Minister, uh, uh, Lyndon Pillin. Now, if he don't know of that, I want him to get into the record and check it. Now, Fane, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm holding Bremen, darling, Ferguson here. Now, what I want to ask you, right? Now, knowing that uh, the Justice uh, made that ruling pertaining to children that are born here, right? Mm -hmm. And knowing that the culture in which had been established within the Bahamas, do you mm -hmm. think the police that, are, that we have here today are capable of mining or taking care of the, this Bahamas in a, in a decent way like they should if the, uh, the government were to put you know, the law in place to fix the situation with the people that are born here and knowing that they already experience, experience all the negativity that bring us to where we are today. Well, well, first, let me say this to you. And thank you for the question, Bremen. And, and it's been a long time. It's good to hear your voice. Let me say this to you. Thank you. Um, let, let me say this to you. The Royal Bahamas Police Force does the best possible job in the circumstances. Here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the problem. The very... Uh, in, um, in infrastructure, which has been con con built around the so-called method, our method of policing is wrong. Fundamentally, it is based upon the idea that we can militarize. Thank you, Darren. That we can militarize the problem into submission. When we talk about crime and punishment, we must talk about a narco economy in which context crime takes place. Mm -hmm. I've said this many times, and I'm going to say it too often. The drug war is what is causing our social problems. Decent Bahamian men exist all over the place. It is the logic of survival that drives so many, some of them to the gunman to sell that dog to take care of their families. Mm -hmm. That is what is, is, is poisoning our nation, not our young men. The Royal Bahamas Police Force, if the drug war was ended, would have no need to be so big. We would not need four to 5,000 people uh, driving up and down in cars and, and getting new contracts to get more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all this policing and surveillance and, and diminishing of our democracy were it not for this drug war that we, that we by logic, have, have taken on from the American government. 
uh, by their instruction and, and by the logic of, uh, of Richard Nixon. These mm -hmm. are the things you must look at. Policing this country is very simple. Abandon the drug war. Abandon the drug war. Legalize drugs. Um, um, I'm not, we lost an opportunity with the, the simple and marginal so-called uh, legalization of medicinal marijuana. We must go <laughs> further. We must look at the structural problems which drive our young men to their behavior patterns. Oh, I know many of our young men. It, it prostitutes our, our young women. It, it diminishes our, our relationship in our relationships inter se. We refer to, 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 to young women as, as, as bitch and hoe. We, 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 we embrace a, a culture which is alien to, yeah, our, but to us. Sim, sim, let, me finish, let me finish, which is alien to us. There are ways to deal with the needs of our police force. We must applaud them, but they can be they can do better work by 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 our decision to dismantle this drug war. And and I, what I want to ask is is the is the dismantling the solutions to dismantle the drug war right, mm -hmm. and the drug culture and the gang culture that spring up with it, is it going to be primarily rooted in shifting governmental policy, shifting culture? shifting cultural and social practices or real economic reform it has to be it has to be both but let me just let me say portugal and of course i think darren you understand what i'm talking mm -hmm. portugal mm -hmm. i'm not a run but i don't know how much how much time he spent in, in the thing in this particular area portugal had the same challenge how do we deal with with, with, with this with this vaccine problem which is which is criminalizing our people causing pervasive health Health, uh, health, health, health abuse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How do we, how do we dismantle the system called the so-called drug war? They did it in 2001 with tremendous impact, with tremendous effect. So much so, the social crisis, attending upon a drug, a, a, a culture, policed in the way in which, in which, in which ours is policed, dropped and fell. The, the social crisis disappeared almost overnight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing new. All right, Tons are not talking. So, so Tons are not talking about something which is new. So, Faye, we have many, many examples in Europe, and, 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 and the, the examples are bound. So, Fane, I got a text here that says, you said legalized drugs. You need to be specific with that statement. So just very briefly tell us what that process looked like in Portugal. Okay, in Portugal. And thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I appreciate that. First, let me say, I believe in the rule of law. I'll be the first one to tell you that we must protect our police officers in the execution of their duties. They exist within a legal uh, context. However... There are, there are experiences around the world, in particular Portugal and parts of Europe, where they have recognized the link between violence, idol violence, and the proliferation of a culture which seeks to police unpoliceable behavior, which is the use of personal narcotics, amphetamines, mind-altering substances. And I've spoken to this many, unpoliceable to this many behavior. Times. What, yeah, exactly. What they determined to do was to dismantle the very structure which criminalizes that behavior, and to and to avoid and to and to and to as it were take away the, the supply side demand, which, which drives gangs in the streets mm -hmm. to warfare with each other. It works kind of it works tremendously fade. well. Uh, fade. Fade. The thing is, uh, the people, most of the people, don't want the drugs to be legalized because when it's not legalized, that's where the most of the money at, and they don't right. want that. Mm. I'm gonna hang and up and listen. Yeah, I appreciate it, and I, and I understand and I accept that, because, you know, I'm also cynical about this so-called legalization of medicinal marijuana. It may very well fall into the hands of six Bahamian families to be the gambling industry. Exactly. We must try to avoid that. We must try to avoid that. We must seek to democratize it, but to end it, because it is the logic of policing it that is causing the homicidal violence. Mm -hmm. And I don't say policing in that personal way, attacking the Royal Bahamas Police Force. No. I mean in the sense right. of destruction itself, of right. seeking to stop. The it's, unpoliceable makes no sense. It's, that it's, one is... Uh, it's, it's, it's the, the simple, simple the simple laws of economics, right? You have to create a need for an item, and that need then drives the demand. And then when you uh, criminalize it, that creates the the element of, oh, well now you know this 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 is now an illegal thing. I could go to jail. I can I can whatever. You you take away the choice from the person who lies whatever it is they want to utilize. But then you drive demand up because this thing becomes scarce. It becomes hard to find. So you drive that demand. You drive. You 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 make it. Uh, I guess what people like to call um, um, the running horse or the, the 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 thing that you can't exactly touch but you know exists and you you want you you create this aura of this amazing and I want this I want that. It drives the drug culture. Absolutely. Listen, Fane, we are sort of running, we are right at the end of our time here, right? And I had some questions I wanted to ask all of y'all in this studio, right? And, and then right now I'm realizing that 
the, the, the young men that are most in need of reform in the spaces that they're in, they don't really care about these questions I was about to ask y'all, right? But I think what was important to note is they need us to do the work, right? Like they need this work to be done whether they care about it or not. And advocates and the stakeholders have to commit to doing this work whether the people they're serving understand the work, whether they understand the passion and the effort and the concern or not. Um, and so we got to continue this conversation at a later date, but I want to just get your last word on this. Is a national youth service the answer to all of our problems? And should we make parents and children perform or participate in the youth service at the same time? No and no. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to have to have you back on to discuss that answer. Please give us your last word before I end the, the show. National Youth Service? Yeah. You mean one that highlights uh, uh, youth in the country to do positive stuff? I mean, yeah. And then what happens to the other? And then I mean, I can make you pick, I mean, I can make you tote sand and I can make you lift rock from one side of the beach to the next. And I can make you count all the coconuts on the trees on the island. And I can do stuff like that, but they'd be edifying. If, if, if that was the solution, shouldn't like positive youth messages be on the front of every newspaper since it's a selling point? I mean, it is the solution because it work, and I see it work, but I don't know why they on the I, front I wanna, of it. I want to do a test. Just put positive youth things in the front of the paper for a year, and let's compare the sales of the paper to the previous year. That's interesting. That's a part of this discussion as well, you know. <laughs> no, do it. Like, every day, put one positive young person who's doing great things in the paper mm -hmm. as the headline story. No negativity, no right. politics. Know what on what yeah. happening with and just remain inclusive and from me and just positive. Look at all this positive, positive, positive. Are you disillusioning the people to the realities? But I can tell you that it's a conversation we was having about it, whether there's a particular policy between media houses and the manage the media presentation of what's going on in the country. But now is not the right time for no, that no, discussion. A, I am very. So my answer would just be no. no I'm no, very no, upset no, no, at no, you no. for being so brilliant <laughs> and having I so am, many I questions. I draw people. <laughs> I draw people. I'm an artist, and all I can do is draw people. But Come look on. at this. My, in fact. Arlington, play that music. We got to close off the show. <laughs> You're on the clock with Aaron. Look at how I didn't even have a cheering, and I met my match today, Green. I've been so delighted to have these young men in the studio to challenge me with their common sense and their father's wit. Right? I'm talking about only mothers have wit. And their father's wit and their good sense. Thank you, Fane Thompson, for joining the conversation. I'm going to have you back on shortly again, soon, directly to continue this conversation. Thank you to my producer, Arlington, and thank you to my callers and my texters. And to the texter who asked why we shift the topic instead of talking about that boy's wife. We don't want to talk about that boy's wife. We would like to talk about systems that we create in our communal and interpersonal spaces that we should focus on to manage better relationships. But dear women, don't nag these men. Let them have their personal and creative pursuits. We will fix society to create a world where men can do them and invest in their families. Have a great day, Bahamas. Thank you.